Hubert Song, author of A Fortunate Passage. I am pleased to present uh, my book, uh, which I thoroughly uh, enjoyed writing. I wrote it to honor my grandparents and their passage. It is a book about family, their struggles, and their destiny. Researching and gathering all of this data was very enjoyable to me. I think you'll find the journey of uh, the Volga Germans uh, from Germany uh, to the Russian Volga colonies in the 1700s uh, and then on to Kansas in the 1800s. I think you'll find that very enjoyable. Also, my grandfather uh, family traced to Jamestown, Virginia, and Catherine the Great uh, lured many of these earnest and hardworking people uh, from Germany uh, into these Volga River colonies uh, in the 1700s, 1763 to be exact. Uh, she issued a manifesto. And then finally, uh, Alexander II, uh, Tsar of Russia, uh, rescinded uh, that manifesto. And all of these people started looking for uh, other places on the globe, uh, and that included uh, the United States, Canada, and Argentina. And gathering all this data was uh, quite enjoyable uh, to put this together into a book. I hope this book will serve to eliminate the struggles and the stories of these families who uh, founded uh, uh, this country uh, and established their footprint in the uh, central regions of Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma daily lives uh, were, are not really much different than ours today. Uh, only the technologies have changed uh, and uh, the technologies of today are seemingly uh, a lot more comfortable uh, for us than they were in earlier times. There was always uh, a crowd in grandmother's backyard. Usually we had a game going on uh, or we're staging a make-believe event. Uh, I'll never forget the alluring hammock ride that we children rigged in the back of grandmother's yard, dangling the hammock between the clothes pole and the large tree. Picture, if you will, a canvas shroud stuffed with uh, the old wool blankets to enlarge it. It was adorned with an old Mexican high-back saddle uh, that had been stripped of its uh, leather. Uh, this creaky wooden frame of a saddle with a metal saddle horn was secured loosely on the middle part of the drooping hammock. We would happily mount it and urge both of our friends and enemies to try to dislodge us from this make-believe bronco riding perch. They would do so by savagely seesawing and zigzagging the end ropes of the hammock from both ends. I would get knocked silly and almost unconscious by this imaginary bronco but would get right back on it as I was not about to let anybody know that I was hurting. In those years, uh, having the time of your life was more important than letting anyone know that you had gotten the crap knocked out of you.